Hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting game from round 8 of the 2019 Singfield Cup. It's uh, Sergei Karakin versus Maxim Vasher Lagrave and it seems like, uh, well, uh, from the last few uh, games that we've covered by MVL that uh, when he has the black pieces people either challenge him to a Nidorf or they challenge him to a Groomfield. Uh, this is one such case where Karakin challenges him to a nice Groomfield game and uh, they follow the same game they played in 2018 Norway Chess Championship with a nice improvement from Karakin or, or perhaps it's not a nice improvement, we'll just have to check it out and see. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, Karakin opens with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, g6, uh, knight to c3, and d5. Uh, the Groomfell defense is on the board. We have c captures, knight captures, uh, e4, kicking away the knight, knight captures on c3, b captures, and the bishop to g7, the main line. Uh, we have bishop to c4, and now c5. So, challenge, just challenging the center, knight to e2, preparing the castle with knight to c6 by black, putting more pressure on the center, uh, and now bishop to e3, adding more defenders to the center. With castles by Maxim, castles by Karakin, uh, and now b6, uh, going uh, for uh, a nice pawn sacrifice, d captures on c5. Uh, with queen to c7, uh, allowing uh, even c captures on b6, but uh, this was only played a few times and the white never really had any success with it. Uh, so, uh, players pretty much abandon the idea. Uh, so, knight to d4. Now, you you block the bishop's uh, attack towards the c3 pawn, and also, you are hoping for knight captures here, so you can improve your pawn structure. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Maxim didn't sacrifice a pawn for that, with knight to e5, uh, now attacking the bishop on c4, and now comes knight to b5, with an attack on the queen on c7. Queen to b8, and now bishop to d5. Uh, just uh, attacking that rook over there. Uh, there uh, in, in their uh, 2018 uh, Norway, uh, Norway Championship, bishop to e2 was played by Karakin, but here bishop to d5 uh, is a different idea, and it's a move uh, Maxime played with the white pieces against the Boris Gelfand, but we're gonna get back to that. Uh, so the rook is under attack, but first knight to g4. Uh, you offer a rook for a nice mate on h2, so of course a, a white has to prevent this. With g3, preventing mate, knight captures on e3, now a attacking the queen, f captures, and here comes a6. A big mistake would be bishop to b7, but even this was played in one game. Uh, then white continued just c6, pushing the bishop back, and after bishop to a6, rook captures on f7, uh, and now black just pulls apart, the rook captures, bishop captures, and you cannot capture the bishop. If you capture the bishop, you get queen d5 check, and now you're uh, getting uh, destroyed whatever you do. Uh, if e6 is just a queen to d7, uh, if for example king e8 you're gonna go rook f1, there's really no good way to prevent queen g8 uh, mate, uh, well of course bishop blocks and then queen captures and f8 will be mate as the pawn covers the d7 square. Uh, but even this was played. Uh, here with a6, uh, the move... Um, uh, the move Boris Gatefan played against Maxim Vashiel Lagrav, uh, and here knight to d4. Uh, in that game, uh, Maxim played bishop captures on f7 uh, against uh, Boris Gatefan in the 2013 World Cup, uh, also played in uh, in Norway, uh, but that game ended in a draw. Of course, uh, Gatefan did not capture and allow queen to d5. Gatefan just played king to h8, and then the game just continued and ended in a draw. But here, after a6 with knight to d4, just nicely retreating, the rook is still under attack, and uh, it is as of move 17 that we have a completely new game. So, and uh, a new move by Karakin. Uh, B captures on c5, uh, pushing the knight back. Uh, uh, a slight improvement to B captures on c5 is bishop to h3 right away, just developing, attacking the rook on f1, uh, because after B captures on c5, Karakin gets rook b1 in. Uh, this comes with an attack on the queen, so it's a slight improvement. Queen to a7 and now knight to c6. So uh, not uh, not giving up the knight for a rook this way. Uh, Karakin wants to grab the e7 pawn as well with check. So first knight c6 attacking the queen, preparing to capture on e7. With queen to c7 and now knight captures on e7 with check. So picking up a pawn. Uh, queen captures and now bishop captures on a8, uh, grabbing the exchange, but it's not a problem. Bishop to h3, now uh, if you don't want to... Uh, lose your uh, bishop on a8, you have to give up the exchange back. So, bishop back to d5 by Karyakin, uh, bishop captures on f1, queen captures on f1, and then now comes uh, bishop captures on c3. Uh, Karyakin grabs the pawn on a6, and we get this position where 
Uh, Karakin has 5 pawns, Maxim has 4 pawns, but uh, it's bishops of opposite colors and Karakin has a double uh, E pawn. So Karakin will try to push his A pawn, uh, whereas Maxim will try to push his C pawn. And now usually uh, a lot of people say that uh, bishop endgames uh, are a draw, uh, bishops of opposite colors, uh, but in uh, such rich positions where there are queens on the board, rooks on the board, uh, the usual way is that the side that attacks is like uh, uh, that side has uh, is up a piece, because if you're attacking with a light square bishop, your opponent cannot use a dark square bishop to, to repel the light square attacks. So uh, if it's, uh, you know, uh, just a nice battle of of uh, bishops of opposite colors just attack that's that's the rule uh, we have queen to g5 by Maxim going after the e3 pawn and now queen back to e2 defending it king to h8 unpinning preparing f5 uh, and the king to g2 improving the position of the king and we have f5 now uh, Karakin uses uh, the undefended bishop on c3 to remaneuver the queen. We have queen to d3, attacking the bishop, bishop back to e5, and now rook to f1. Again, not allowing captures because rook captures on f8 with check. So, king to g7, uh, just uh, now de defending the rook on f8, and now comes e captures on f5. Rook captures on f5, and now a4. Karakin starts pushing his pass pawn, and it's much easier for him to push his pass pawn than it is for uh, Maxim, as it's it will be very hard to pass uh, to you know pass the c4 square. Uh, rook captures on f1, king captures, and now comes uh, a very interesting move by Maxim, bishop to d4. Uh, he's of course uh, hoping for uh, for uh, captures and captures, but uh, if this happens, for example, captures queen captures. Uh, then you can just start pushing a5, but then c captures on d4. And now after a6, yes, white, uh, uh, the, the pass pawn uh, on the a-file is very far ahead, but you can just go queen h1 check, pick up the h2 pawn, and th this game is a draw. Uh, but after bishop to d4, uh, Karakin played something else, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the move that Karakin played in this position uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you... Uh, who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent finder of moves in games of opposite colored bishops, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop to c4, this is the idea. Uh, the point is, uh, <laughs> uh, the point is, well, manifold. Uh, first off, uh, you cannot go queen captures on e3, because after queen captures and bishop captures, you push a5, and now uh, there's no stopping the pawn. Uh, the c5 pawn is blocked, you cannot push it. Bishop to c4 blocks it, and you can't guard the a7 square, which is the only dark square this pawn has to cross uh, to become a queen. And also you can't go uh, bishop f4 due to the g3 pawn to try and prevent it uh, with this maneuver. So this is completely lost. Uh, you can't go for that. On the other hand, after bishop to c4, you don't really have a good option. Uh, uh, bishop captures on e3 was played, but it doesn't really change anything. The a pawn is still going up the board. Uh, queen to d7 check, king h6, queen h3 check first, king g7, uh, and now queen to e6, uh, just uh, nicely centralizing the queen. Also, uh, now uh, Karakin is ready to push his a pawn, and you don't have uh, any checks to give with black. So, bishop to d4, uh, clearing the room for the for the black queen. Now comes queen f7 check, king to h6, and now a5. So you allow uh, a check or two, but it's not a problem, as you can always hide king g2, king h3. Uh, so bishop to f6, now allowing checks along the f file, and king to g2, not allowing. Uh, we have queen to d2 check, king to h3, and now queen back to g5. Uh, uh, fr from there the queen will be able to deliver more checks. Uh, queen to f8 check, now comes the bishop to g7, and now queen back to f3, uh, which is an excellent square for the queen, not allowing queen h5 queen h5 check, not allowing queen f5 check, and also keeping an eye on the a8 queening square. The bishop uh, controls the a6 square, so really it will be impossible to stop this pawn. Bishop to d4, uh, but now just a6. Uh, we have queen to e7, uh, guarding the a7 square, uh, but now comes queen to e8, and it's uh, queen to a8, and it's not a problem. Uh, you can't deliver this check as the bishop covers this square. If you go here, then just king g2, and the queen controls this entire diagonal, so the, any checks along the light squares will not be possible. Bishop back to f6 by Maxim, and now a7. Uh, we have queen to d7 check, and now even g4. Uh, queen back to e7, and now, uh, of course, a very nice move by Karakin, queen to f3, preparing a8 queen, and also if you capture on a7, then you lose the bishop on f6, but there is no other move. We have queen captures on a7, queen captures on f6, and now, 
Maxim still doesn't resign. He finds a very uh, nice idea, queen to a3 check. Uh, and now, uh, what do you do here? Also a very interesting idea. Uh, feel free to pause the video uh, and try to find uh, the, the winning move for white in this position. Uh, well, uh, again, give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent avoider of stalemate. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, if you found anything uh, except bishop d3 or bishop b3, you will be losing this game. For example, if, if king h4, then queen to h3 check ensures uh, stalemate. Uh, now you just capture and the black has no moves. Uh, you can't move the king, you can't move the pawn, the pawn is pinned, this pawn cannot move, uh, it's just stalemate. Uh, it's the same if, if you go king to g2, just queen g3 check. Uh, and again, if you capture it, stalemate. If you go king h1, queen g1 check, captures, it's again stalemate. So Karakin played the only move he had, bishop d3, but it's not a problem. Queen captures on d3 with check and now king to h4. Now, of course, uh, the checkmate, re uh, the stalemate resource is no longer available. If you deliver check, uh, white just captures your queen, you still have your c pawn uh, that can be pushed. Uh, so... Uh, Maxim could have resigned here, but he, uh, you know, uh, he was being a good sport and he allowed Karakin to finish the game in great style. Queen d4 offering a trade, but Karakin just played queen to f8 check, queen blocks g7, uh, and now of course comes g5 and we have uh, a checkmate on the board, which is very rare and, you know, uh, Maxim should definitely be congratulated on, on allowing such a, uh, you know, uh, su such a nice presentation on the board, uh, as, as it's very rare to see checkmate on the board between two two such elite grandmasters. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, it seems like uh, I said it in the beginning of the video. Uh, er everyone uh, always says Maxim is the best player in the world uh, when it comes to Nidorf or when it comes to the Grunfeld defense, and he almost always loses games in those openings. I mean, not always. He draws most of them, but in, in top elite uh, competitions, he loses them, and uh, th that's exactly why he's the best because he constantly. Uh, keeps uh, searching for for really awesome awesome active positions such <laughs> such as this one and every time he plays a knight of that knight of game against uh, Fabiano Coruana where he sacrifices two exchanges not one but two uh, really just uh, awesome stuff so uh, I really hope he he continues uh, w with this play style as the games are just just incredible uh, you know even even with uh, a negative result here and there. Uh, but yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank James Norwood for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. We're going to check out one more game from round eight of the Singfield Cup, uh, and then we're going to check out the standings. Uh, we're going to continue the Capablanca saga as soon as I get the chance, and of course, checking up on your suggestions. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.